Aha! This is Laborts, and it is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you need. We start with the wings applying Dragon Red. I'm using an airbrush this time because this model is huge, so the airbrush can help us with applying some base coats and highlights really fast. This is a 0.2mm airbrush, but a 0.5mm would be good as well for this kind of task. I'm using some army painter paints because uh, getting paint out of the citadel pots to an airbrush tank is a little bit of a hassle, but don't worry, I will use some citadel paints too. Because there is nothing as vibrant as Evil Sun Scarlet, so get some of that on the feather parts. My main approach is going to be similar to previous videos. The light is coming from the left, so we are going to plan the highlights according to that. I wouldn't get into what thinner and what uh, paint ratio you want uh, to use for your airbrush because it's a bit different for every color, but we want nice coverage with our first few layers. Obviously the airbrush can only do thin layers, otherwise you'll be clogging up like uh, Granny's arteries in no time, so add some thinner to your paints. Ok, there are two sections for the wings. The more burgundy part and the red part. I used wine red for those parts. Don't worry about overspraying a bit uh, on the red parts, a little bit of overspray is alright when airbrushing. Let's add some shadowy tones with mixing some Rhinox Hide to the Vine Red. Rhinox Hide is great for darker parts because it has some purple in it. Oh, and a little bit of airbrushing tip. When you check the consistency for the paints on your thumb or on your glove or on uh, Granny's uh, feet to tickle the old lady, you should always check your airbrush sway first on a paper towel or something uh, similar because it's kind of a bad experience when you filled up your tank and your airbrush is spitting like uh, Takashi 69 to the feds and you don't want that. Then I add some white rider red for the brightest highlights on the feathers. I won't go any further because the wings are kind of a background for our mini. We don't want to create too much attention for them. After that I went back and added some more Wild Rider Red to tone back the desaturated uh, color a tiny bit. I left a little bit from the Wild Rider layer, so it still can enhance the contrast on the Mini. Lastly, I highlighted the burgundy parts with some Wild Rider and Ice Yellow added to our Vine Red color. This is a really subtle highlight, but it will help to move the focus to the goat part of the mini. With that, the wings are finished for now. I applied some masking putty to the lower wings so they won't get any grain on them. As I said, a little bit of overspraying is ok, but these wings would end up straight green if I don't cover them with something. For the first base coat of the snake part, I used angel green mixed with some green skin. This is a very cool and dark green, great for the shadowy parts of the scales. Aim your brush in a way that you won't get green over the wings, or uh, I will slap on your tiny hand. Now with pure green skin I sketch out the highlight areas. Oh but Papa Laborts, how do you know where to put the highlights? I took some pictures once again, so I don't have to figure out any of the highlights and these photos will guide Papa Laborts old and shaky hands. It's super fun applying highlights with the airbrush because it's blending on its own. But don't worry, there will be plenty of glazing up ahead, so keep your brush as ready as well. I continue to highlight the snake skin with jungle green. This is a very vibrant green with lots of yellow in it. 
It's quite interesting that this mini has such vibrant colors. Some animals have some vibrant colors to scare off other predators, and I think the art team's concept was the same with this saturated tone, so the players will know that this boss is serious trouble when you encounter him. At first it uh, looks a bit chaotic with all these bird, snake, goat, uh, insect parts, but uh, it makes sense. And I'm sure the, this uh, chaotic field width was intended. Then I mixed some ice yellow to the jungle green to sketch out the brightest highlights. This is quite desaturated, but don't worry, we will fix it in the next step. Mix some jokero orange to the jungle green, so we add some warmth to our cold reptile skin. Reduce the highlight areas with this mix and apply it slowly, so you don't want to end up with the fully orange scales and a super red tiny hand. Lastly, I add some sunny skin tone for the final highlights. Tiny sections on the skin, you just need a touch of this. Don't need to cover fully with this color. Think of it more of a glaze. Now for the belly of the beast, or a snake. Anyway, I use grey brown. Uh, aim carefully with your airbrush, so we keep overspraying to a minimum. If you ever doubt yourself where the paint is gonna go when you pull back the trigger, just pull the trigger a super tiny bit so you can't make big mistakes. Then I mix decomposed flesh to the grey brown and apply the highlights like the light is coming from the left. So this way our uh, highlight placement will be consistent and believable. For the last highlights I went in with pure decomposed flesh. Super tiny sections and I only used it on the top right part of the belly. That was all the airbrushing for a while. We will need it later for one more section, so clean your airbrush or I will slap on your tiny hand. Now get your good old brush and let's start on the skin with the Rhinox hide. Cover all the goat skin with this color. Uh, now I'm not gonna lie, uh, Papa Laborts had a hard time figuring out the color for this demonic goat skin, so there will be a little bit of experimenting, so just uh, bear with me please. I started to apply the highlights on the skin with a mix of Bugman's Glow and the Rhinox Hide. It felt like a good direction, but I wasn't sure at the moment. Uh, just trust the process and uh, Papa Laborts. Then I glazed over this layer to blend it in and make it smooth like Granny's butt cheek. After that I went in with pure Bugman's glow and the skin was just a dark human skin. I didn't want that. I wanted something that looks like uh, fur but uh, not the uh, skin and didn't want to add the texture to create it. Like a uh, bald cat you know, because some bald cats have this very short hair and that's what I had in mind. So I used Bainblade Brown over the highlights and it turned out better. Uh, it felt like a good direction. I found the highlight areas a little big, so I glazed some Rhinox hide mixed with Bainblade Brown, so mute them back a bit. I still wasn't happy about the darkness of the recesses, so I used pure rhinoxide uh, over the darkest shadows. We were getting there, so I had to see some highlights if this is the right direction, so I mixed some sunny skin tone to the Baneblade Brown and uh, put some highlights on the shoulders, face and the uh, pecs with a glaze consistency. Mm -hmm. 
I glazed back some bend blade down, not uh, really for muting but to make the transition smoother. Glazing back and forth always creates a smoother transition in my opinion, or it feels smoother at least. Painted the eyes with sunny skin tone, quite well sculpted eyes so it's easy to paint them. I didn't paint the iris because it looks more disturbing and uh, demonic this way. Then I glaze some Nagarot Knight to add an extra hue to the shadows and make them more interesting and give more depth to them. Then a bit of more sunny skin tone glazing because <laughs> it looks like I'm addicted to it and I remember this is not the last time uh, I'm doing it. Alright, because uh, I glazed some Warfin grey <laughs> over the highlights to enrich them with some uh, purple greyness. Yeah, then it makes sense, so I went back to Sunny Skin Tone. Uh, trying out new stuff always involves uh, second guessing yourself, but that's the part of the process. Don't always do the things you know how to do. Experiment a bit and let yourself fail. So you can grow as a painter and please do not get frustrated throughout the process or I will slap on your tiny hand. Then you can get frustrated. Now for the hair. I mixed some Demonet Hide and Rhinox Hide and sketched out the highlight parts. Papa Laborts want black hair. With the first highlight you should paint the recesses of the hair as well. Don't just pick out some hair locks. Reduce the highlight area with the Demonet Hide. You see my paint consistency is quite thin, so try to aim for that. Or if you are comfortable to use a more thicker consistency and feather out the paint, that uh, works fine too. With a mix of Warfin Grey and Sunny Skin Tone, reduce the highlight areas even more, so you'll have some nice shiny demon hair. For the mouth, I used Dragon Red and painted the teeth with Grimy Grey. Now it's time for the horns. Cover all of them with Bane Blade Down. You can go with a bit diluted consistency around the recesses, but we are going to airbrush over them, so don't spend too much time painting them. I airbrushed Dumbul Brown at the end of the horns, just forget to record it. Don't worry, I already slapped on my tiny hand, here. So for the highlights, I used Grimy Grey, aiming toward the head to enhance our focal point. Use some masking putty for this part too, unless you want to desaturate the skin and get a big slap on your tiny hand. Obviously you can do that with a brush too, uh, using some glazes, but uh, it's just way faster this way. Next I did some black lining on the recesses of the horn with Rhinox hide. Be really careful because if you mess this part up you need to fix the airbrushed parts. So yeah, it's not an easy one if your black lining skills are not like uh, Jose Da Vinci. Uh, mine are not, uh, so, so yeah I did some uh, fixing. So here comes some nice NMM. This is kind of a crown jewel for this mini, so let's treat it as such. Let's start with Rhinox hide and cover all the gold parts. Remember the teeth and horns will be different colors, so don't paint those yet. Now it's some failed experiment time again with Papa Laborts. Uh, for some weird reason, <laughs> I thought that it would be okay to use Bane Blade Brown for sketching out the gold highlights. I mean uh, later I used this layer as I was underpainting, but uh, no it won't work for gold. Maybe if you mix some um, reddish brown to it, but on its own it's uh, not good. But hey, that's why you need to experiment, so you can see what's working and what is not. So, so I thought, <laughs> so I thought at this point that oh come on, Papa Laborts, just use yellow and it will look great. And uh, no, it's not. But the yellowish brown parts are okay. So sketch those highlights with gold brown because we can use that layer pretty well. Remember, guys, light is coming from the left. So when applying the brighter highlight colors, try to make it smaller and more mute on the shadowy part, or I will slap on your tiny head. Let's get rid of the Bane Blade Brown with glazing some Dumbul Brown over it. It will turn into gold in an instant because gold is basically yellow, brown and red. 
these three colors will create gold all the time. You can play around it with different highlights and shadows, but you need these three tones for gold. You need a couple of layers and remember to glaze from the bright part to the dark area when you are glazing into something darker. It's okay to mute back the yellowness a bit, it will look great. Continue with the highlights on the yellow parts, add some grimy grey to the gold brown and use a thin consistency to apply these highlights. I'm only focusing on one side for this part so our light source will be more clear and understandable. Oh and don't forget to paint the sword grip and the arm rings. The method is all the same. Take your time with the enema. There is no fast way to do enema. I mean, yeah, there are some fast ways to do it, but it uh, won't look nice. Everything that looks good takes time. Some painters will be faster and some painters will be slower. If you look at some crazy good anime on Instagram, you can be sure that the artist worked hours on it. Or maybe not hours, but he or she did anime so many times that they are relatively fast with the process. If your goal is to get better at painting, then please Take your time and don't look for shortcuts because there are no shortcuts replacing hard work. Except if you invested in the cryptocurrency 10 years ago, then yeah, okay, you had one shortcut, but in painting, there are none. For the steel and MM parts, we start with scave and blight dinge and cover all the feet and holes. Then we sketch out the highlights with a warp fin grey. The teeth are little cylinders and horns are almost flat. So for the teeth, just paint the upper section, but make your highlights lean towards the center, if uh, this makes sense. I'm blending in this phase too with some glazing. After that, reduce the highlight areas with administratum grey. Once you sketch out the highlights, you just reduce them more and more, so that's uh, the work with the NMM, to blend all these layers together, but it's worth your time. Trust Papala boards. You can add some secondary reflections to the teeth, but be careful around the gold parts. Now I mixed some grimy grey to the administratum grey to increase the contrast. The layers I'm using are still very thin and I try to make the same brush strokes to create a smooth and silky transition like Granny's butt cheek. For the last highlight, I used pure grimy grey. I created two little highlight sections on the right horn, so it looks a bit more interesting, but soon realized I don't have enough contrast for them, so I glazed some admin grey and uh, scaven blight dinge to fix that. See, I was right, I know I went back with sunny skin tone for the skin because I thought the focal point moved towards the metal demon head way more and uh, not towards our flesh and bone demon head. Then I applied some edge highlights with grimy grey. It's just personal preference. I think the NMM parts look defined enough without it, but I guess it's just a habit now that I edge highlight the NMM parts that I can. Uh, angle your brush and use base layer consistency for your paint. Lastly, I glazed some pure grimy grey over the highlights and I didn't want to use white because it would be too bright. And I like the idea that this huge monster lurks in the shadows, 
probably because I painted this uh, before a uh, black background, but I guess it makes sense. Then of course we paint the blade with the same method, except the edge highlight. Do not bother with that because I tried it. And uh, maybe her mini sword is uh, better, but mine's is uh, far from straight, so I ended up repainting one side of the blade. It uh, was not fun. Uh, the sword was bent anyway on this one. I tried to straight it out with uh, hot and cold water, but the plastic on these larger minis are so resistant that uh, hot water had no effect on it. Only the hairdryer did, but uh, that was quite tricky because once the hairdryer heats up the plastic, you have like a second to shape it uh, until it hardens again. Uh, it's quite weird, but uh, as Granny Laborts always said, if you can't handle the hassle, you should have become a pig farmer. And do not put me in a nursing home to die. Yes, she always said that. But we did put her in a nursing home. She was uh, very angry about that and uh, very violent. Okay, now with the main NMM parts done, we got a little jewel. Uh, I saw a very cool tutorial from uh, Juan Hidago, painting gems, so I'm gonna implement that. Definitely check out his video if you want a bit more in-depth guide about the subject. Basically, I paint the half of the gem with uh, Dragon Red, with a thin consistency, pulling the paint from the top. Then I add some Evil Sun Scarlet to the lower half with the same process, but uh, covering a smaller part. After that, I add some White Rider Red, even more reducing the highlight area. Add some orange hue to it with some Trost Rail Orange with a thin layer. For the maximum highlights, add some Luganat Orange to the lower parts and add some dots to the upper part so it will imitate the glint. Lastly, I add some grimy grey dots for a super shiny glint. It's uh, easy and it looks awesome. With that, our shiny gem is done. It's so shiny like Granny's eyes when uh, she asked you not to put her in a nursing home. But Granny, we talked about this. You'll be having so much fun with other dying gallery people. Okay, now for the leather parts. Cover all of them with Rhinox hide. See, we are using Rhinox hide mostly all over our paint job, so it will have a more integrated feel to it. Highlight it with Dumble Brown and reduce the highlight areas towards the left side. Mix some Bane Blade Brown to the Dumble Brown and continue the process, gradually decreasing the highlight areas. I uh, did some match highlights with this color, so the leather parts got a bit more defined. Now, remember what I said about the Citadel layer brushes? That they are not very good. They usually split no matter what you do or how you treat them, but this is going to be beneficial because we want to put some texture on those leather parts. And they will work great for that. So use a thin base layer consistency and add some small dots over the leather hardness, focusing on the left side more. Then we tone it back with some browning, really diluted, we just glaze some over the leather parts. After that, we paint the rest of the small metal parts, like the square shaped rivets on the leather skirt and the ring on the harness. Guys, spoiler alert, we use the exact same colors and techniques over them as well. The square shapes are a bit different. You just cover them with Skaven Bright Dange and leave the bottom half darker and the side which faces towards the light, you paint those sides lower part uh, with Warp Fin Grey and the top part with Administratum Grey and then Edge Highlight with Grimy Grey and all of a sudden they look like metal. It's quite easy 
you can go for a smooth transition between admin gray and grimy gray if you want, but it will look good the way I mentioned before as well. For the last time we pop open the lid of our rhinoxide and cover all the little insect legs. I highlighted them with some demonet height mixed with rhinoxide. We don't want to bring any unnecessary attention to these insect legs, so what I usually do is I just choose desaturated and dual colors to highlight them because they have way less uh, light values. Then I use pure demonite hide in a thin layer consistency and I reduce the highlight areas even more. After that I went for some warp thin grey to increase the contrast just a bit. Very thin layers and smaller and smaller highlight areas. It's quite handy to leave these insect parts for the very end of your painting session because throughout the whole work I rested my hand on them a lot. Uh, and touching your minis always have a chance to scrape off some of the paint which you want to avoid all the time. Lastly, I went in with Administratum Grey. Add some lines on the top of the cloth so it will look like they are shiny and sharp. Decrease the highlight areas and focus these highlights towards the demon's body, enhancing the focal point on the mini. Now all that is left is a little bit of edge highlight for the wings. You see the airbrush parts stand out a bit, so some edge highlight can help that. I use the Lila Lilac on the burgundy parts and the Luganat Orange on the red parts. I also highlighted the feathers on his belly so those get more defined and I think really looks good on them. Use base layer consistency. My edge highlights are not the crispiest, I know, but believe when uh, Papa Labor says that it's really hard to paint for the camera and also see what I'm doing, so I'm trying my best here, you guys. And that's it guys, Balberit painted and prepared for your heroes to encounter him. Uh, this mini took like uh, 4 days to paint, so it's uh, definitely not a fast one, but I'm quite happy with the end result and uh, to me that's what matters. So thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure. A huge thanks to my patrons who support this kind of videos. With a special shout out to Jonathan Rhodes! Dominic Reitman, trying to paint minis, Jonathan Mosner, Rulzak, and Vlad D. If you want to support Papa Laborts, you can do that on Patreon. You will have early access to these videos and you can vote on the next mini. I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's butt chick.